What's going on Minecraft fans? My name is Bodie and today we are back at it again with another episode in our nether only hardcore wither challenge miniseries. And to quickly recap the first episode, I survived the treacherousness of the nether, got myself a little bit of the lakefront property by selling enough mushrooms in the hood. I even managed to locate my first diamond amongst several other things. I'd highly recommend going and checking it out if you haven't, I'll throw a card up on screen. At the end of the last episode I asked you guys what we should name our homeless person and I got a lot of amazing feedback. And while I did find it absolutely hilarious that Luke the Notable pretty much perfectly fits the homeless person aesthetic, and he's carrying my channel, much like this Strider carries me, I decided to go with Beanbag. I thought it had a nice ring to it. Thanks Ryan for the suggestion. And the ultimate goal of today's episode is to raid as many Bastion remnants as I can so that I can get the best gear possible for the upcoming Wither fight. I figured the first thing on our list should be to get an iron pickaxe. How am I supposed to be the richest boy in Minecraft if I can't even mine these gold blocks? Beanbag decided to wander off and leave me stranded on an island surrounded by lava. I could tell this adventure was already starting out pretty poorly, but that means we can only go up from here, right? Well, at least I know Beanbag still loves me. Yep, he still loves me. He just doesn't know it yet. While we didn't find a bastion, we did find another fortress. And it's whatever. It still has loot in it. And just so Beanbag remembers just how much he loves me, I'm going to be keeping him in this hole so he can think about what he's done. A little Stockholm Syndrome never hurt anyone. At least not like how I hurt this blaze. It didn't even know it hit him. It was my arrows. And fortunately for me, so far all of the loot has been terrible. But at least I got another saddle so I can replace Beanbag if he decides to act up. And I thought I was making an absolutely genius move here by lighting the ground on fire. But I am in fact an idiot. I should have realized that wither skeletons are in fact not flammable. But a sword works just as well. I thought I could be sneaky and loot these chests without being seen. However, that was not the case. And now I'm being chased by a horde of wither skeletons. And after taking care of those unwanted delinquents, I went ahead and stole all of their belongings. And it turns out those guys were saving five diamonds for me. How generous. I always hate running across blazes in these long corridors, there's almost no way to escape them and you're bound to get hit at least once. Wither skeletons on the other hand are complete wimps. And one of them was so kind enough to drop his head for me. I decided to put it on to celebrate my war crimes. I then decided to pick a few fights that I probably shouldn't have. These blazes are going to end up being the death of me with all of this reckless behavior. But as the kids say these days, YOLO swag. The rest of the nether fortress loot was pretty mediocre, however I did come across some iron. This allowed me to make that iron pickaxe that I was so desperately needing. This is the only part of the nether fortress that I didn't end up exploring because it was just one giant cluster frick. And when this wither skeleton charged at me, I made sure to end his life, and it just so happened he dropped his head as well. After being set on fire a few more times, I decided it was probably best if we just went ahead and left. And that's exactly what I did. I bet that you didn't think we'd come back for these gold blocks, did you? If I'm right, then you have to leave a like on this video, and if I'm wrong, then let me know in the comments and I will give you a cookie. I finally made it back home, and like any smart person, the first thing that I did was make a diamond sword, and then immediately after I wasted all of my iron on some iron pants that I would wear for a total of 5 minutes. Beanbag and I decided to go off for bash and busting round 2. And by bastion busting round 2, I realized that we didn't actually come across a bastion during our first adventure. However, we're just going to pretend that the nether fortress was a bastion and call it even. Plus the two wither skeleton heads were a nice bonus and I really can't be too upset about that. But I can be upset that this bastion is literally floating on top of the lava and so I can't mine or build my way into it. And the local hoglin population wasn't taking too kindly to me hanging out next to their island, so getting into this bastion was going to be kind of a pain. The first thing I do when I see a hoglin is build straight up. You can see I'm pretty good at cranking 90s in Minecraft. I also found out that striders actually carry their children. They're basically lava kangaroos. I think this bastion must be for poor piglins because I found exactly one chest on this entire half of the building. And even then, this chest had some pretty mediocre loot. And then that's when I saw it. A statue made of solid gold. I lied, this bastion isn't for poor people, it's in fact for rich people, and I'm going to make it all mine. And I'll be starting with this chest full of shiny armor. You know I'm not exactly sure why baby hoglins keep attacking me, but you'd think at this point they'd be sick of dying. Also, I somehow managed to get further away from the statue of gold, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing wrong here. The last chest in this bastion was also terrible, but honestly I'm just happy that I got fire protection. You know I'm still not quite sure what I'm doing wrong here, but I need to be over there. You guys are about to witness a murder. Ah, that fresh smell of bacon in the morning. Haha, -ha, and I finally located the statue of gold. Oh, don't mind me, I'm just going to be doing what the Spanish did to the Aztecs. That statue was 16 blocks of gold, and in return, I will now teach you about Jesus. That sounds like a pretty fair trade to me. I'm telling you, these baby hoglins have a pretty severe death wish. 
I didn't want to document their murders, just know that it was painful. I quickly forgot about my violent crimes when I came across another Bastion. And as it turns out, this Bastion was having a dance party. Well, at least until this hoglin jumped into the lava. Then it was just depressing, and I can't even mind this gold block, so now it's just double sad. With my new diamond sword, I thought that I could take on a hoglin, and I was horribly mistaken. I nearly died because of this. I was mere seconds away from death. One more hit and I would have been finished. I taunted him by eating his cooked brethren before safe spotting him and finishing him off. I also made certain to murder his child so that he didn't grow up one day to seek revenge. Some more gold blocks added to the collection. I fully expect to make a giant statue of myself out of solid gold before the end of this. Inside this chest, I found my first piece of ancient debris, which is awesome, because not having a diamond pickaxe yet means this is the only way that I can acquire it. Now I only need three more for it to actually be useful. I found a bunch of piglin having a party in the basement. They must not have been invited to the dance party, but I let them know. And once they all left for the dance party, I stole all of their stuff. A hoglin could have easily knocked me off this ledge, and I would have fallen to my death. Realizing that I was just testing my luck, I figured it was time to head out. Rune portals can be a good source of enchanted gold weapons and gear. And I now have a full suit of shiny gold enchanted armor. You know, there's something oddly satisfying about a zombie pig riding around on a homeless person. I didn't even know this was possible, but I'm 100% about it. Also, you'd think after all of this time that I'd be better at avoiding lava. And you would be mistaken. But finding another bastion definitely helps soothe the burns. This bastion's layout was quite a bit different than the other ones. It was pretty flat and there was a big opening in the middle. That didn't stop me from finding fat stacks of gold. And it was someone's great idea to put a chest right out in the middle of the open for all of the piglins to see. Obviously, I went ahead and made myself a little shack of shame so I could rob them in peace. And lucky for me, these piglins were generous enough to share their ancient debris with me. And yet, for some reason, I can't seem to stop falling into the lava. I am extremely grateful that I found that fire protection armor because I would probably be dead at this point. Beanbag and I got what we came here for, so it's time to head out. Robbing Piglin Blind was one of my new favorite pastimes, but this nether fortress was definitely a welcome change of pace. And after making sure Beanbag couldn't escape, I dug my way into the nether fortress and began liberating it of all this unwanted loot. There admittedly wasn't that much loot, but I did take out a few blaze spawners just for the giggles. But unfortunately, this wither skeleton didn't want to part with its head. And with my inventory full of loot and my belly full of mushroom stew, it was time to head out. Just after I figured out how to get down from here. Beanbag is essentially royalty at this point, I think he's really starting to like his miniature castle. But it's officially time that we head upstairs and check out exactly how much loot we've acquired so far. I'd say we came a pretty long way since the beginning of the episode, with only two ancient debris away from our first piece of netherite. And you know what that means? It means the adventure's not done yet. I came across another bridge bastion. These bastions generally have three chests with some decent loot in them, as well as the statue with 16 blocks of gold. I liberated them and brought them immediately back to my base. I was beginning to accumulate enough wealth that I decided to make a treasure chest, and I wanted to do something else while I was here. With the new Crying Obsidian, you can make something that's called a Respawn Anchor with six Crying Obsidian and three Glowstone Blocks. Essentially, it allows you to set your spawn in the nether. While I'm in hardcore mode, I can't respawn, so I just thought it was a massive flex to use them as a decoration piece. I also slapped some lanterns on top of Lodestone Blocks, because why not? At this point, my final goal of the episode is to locate a treasure room. A treasure room is a type of bastion that's filled with the best loot possible, including enchanted diamond armor. So we're pretty much going to spend the rest of the episode trying to hunt one of those down. I spent a few hours raiding lower tier bastions while looking for the treasure room, and I finally came across one. I'm gonna have to give Beanbag a bucket of lava for how many times I've abandoned him in a hole. And here it is, the bridge to the treasure room. And you can see, all the way at the bottom is where we're trying to go. Also, before we get down there, I just wanted to point out that I've already got a fat stack of loot. Something I learned about the treasure room is that it has a magma cube spawner, which is really awesome. I could see this coming in super handy when creating a farm. But this is hardcore, and I'm just looking to kill the wither, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that everything's murdered. And with all of that murder out of the way, it's time to see if these treasure rooms are all they're cracked up to be. And I was unfortunately met with a very depressing sight. Where's all the enchanted diamond armor I was promised? Where's the enchanted diamond weapons? What kind of nonsense is this? Why do I only get one netherite ingot for all of this hard work? This was the biggest waste of time in the history of history. The only upside to any of this is that I came across a piece of ancient debris that I accidentally passed up on the way down. That was actually a pretty depressing raid of a treasure room. I was expecting quite a bit more than one netherite ingot and a piece of ancient debris. I'm just going to go wallow in my sadness now. Not gonna lie, that was a horribly depressing outcome, but I have an idea for something that'll cheer me up. We take four gold bars and four netherite scrap. That gives us one netherite ingot. Next comes the smithing table. Slap that bad boy down, throw in our diamond sword and our netherite ingot, and bam. 
Now we've got ourselves a netherite sword, and that definitely puts a smile on my face. I also found this clock. It doesn't even work, and that's why I liked it. As always, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. It really does mean a lot to me, and I really hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe, like the video, and leave me a comment on what you thought. I will see you guys in the next one. Bodie Boy, signing off.